So the mission today, very simple. Take the car to a cool spot, get a couple photos, drive it back, and uh, park it all in one piece, just the way I got it. By the way, to let you guys know, I'm using my handy dandy Sony a7R Mark IV with the 24 to 70 G Master Lens 2.8 f-stop and a CPND or NDPL. And also, I should, oh, I should, I didn't do that. Yeah, that wasn't there when I touched it, maybe. I also do have the 85 millimeter lens that I just bought and I actually want to put this to the test. All right, enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and pick up girls. I mean, let's go ahead and take up, <laughs> pick up some photos. Uh, take some photos. <sighs> Let me, I'm just hungry. All right, parking brake off. Should probably scoot up a little bit just because I can't reach the pedals. Seatbelt's on, up shift. Mirrors are good. All right, let's do this. Roll down the window so we can hear that beautiful V8 twin turbo engine. Let's put it on some paddle shifters. that this was actually a naturally aspirated engine I feel like it would sound a lot better passing those little bridges or going through tunnels uh, even though I know twin turbo makes it a little bit faster spec wise and everything I, I really would have it naturally aspirated which is why I bought a 812 GTS on Forza Horizon oh don't tell me it's the brakes making that noise oh it's embarrassing well, good thing it's not my Ferrari. Awesome. All right. If I just angle it a little more up here. All right, wheels turn all the way. All right, so 160th of my shutter speed, 3.2 f-stop, ISO, uh, let's do 50, drop as low as I can, I'm crouching, and taking the shot. All right, see how that looks. Okay, that's, I can, I can work with that. See if I can get a straight on shot. Nice, nice. Actually, I, feel, I like this shot a lot that I just took. This one, this one. You know what, let's just flip it around. You know what, let's get a straight on shot. Let's make sure these parking brake lights are on. Uh, it doesn't look like they're on, but that's that's fine, I guess. You know, this is where I really wish my parents' jeans did not kick in. I'm like 5'5", five five. I'm, I'm, I'm about as, the same height as this Ferrari. And I'm trying to get a cool top view shot. And usually I'll, I'll have somebody taller than me help me out with this. Um, huh. That's not going to stop me from trying. Okay. You know what? I'll just stick to lower, <laughs> lower grounds for now. Let me get some tight shots real quick. Increasing my ISO just because we're in the shadows. Let's go ahead. Let's position this car the right way. All right, dropping ISO to about 80. Adjusting the polarizer to make sure that we are getting rid of the harsh reflections. Now dropping down, zooming in, and getting the shot. So now it's time to bring out that 85 millimeter. I wanna see what this is really about. If I can get it in, there we go. Just make sure I drop my ISO as low as I can. I might have to increase my shutter speed. Oh yeah, this. It's about to be crazy. Because I'm using an 85 millimeter lens, um, I'm gonna need to take like 100 steps back. Uh, okay, maybe that was too many steps. I'm gonna have to get a little closer. Oh, wow. 
see if I can go ahead and bring this around one more time and use that 85 millimeter millimeter lens all right let's go ahead and adjust the CP drop as low as we can and take the shot yep yep wow let me get a, a little bit closer yeah this one's it nice i think we're good with our shots in this location so that wraps up for today's shoot um that went out amazing like i did not expect for the sun it's hitting right now i don't know if you can see that glare but the sun glare kicked in and it was just so now let's go ahead let's go to the editing process and see what we can do to these photos so now we are in the editing process of this video to give a background i'm using lightroom classic and i'm also going to be using the Velve auto preset packs that are available in the description down below if you guys want to go ahead and use exactly what i'm using when it comes to selecting moods and presets so as i went through the Velve auto presets i opened up the bonus preset pack and there's actually like a, that's probably my favorite one and the reason for that is because you get these variety of colors you get like this futuristic look it's just a whole bunch like if i were to just scroll through each one right now blue moon dark vibes fire orange futuristic mood which by the way brand new brand new by the way did i mention it was brand new night fuzz sunset vibe white fuzz not that white fuzz and yellow forest so you have now eight total presets to choose from and it all gives a different hit none of it looks the same but the one i like the most is futuristic mood so i'm gonna go ahead and select that now the car seems too dark the background seems too blown out so there's a little tweaks we have to do to make this photo look a little more decent first thing first i'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the program selects the car that way we can go ahead and separate the tone and kind of the exposure of our subject from the background and i'm gonna do that by selecting this icon pressing select subject let the program kind of autofill where the subject's at and i'm gonna go ahead and press o to get rid of that red overlay i'm gonna increase the shadows to about 40 and I'm gonna increase exposure to about 0.10. And now already you can see the details on the car just because we're bringing up the exposure and shadows. I wanna make sure that the wheels on the car also stand out. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush tool, color it in and then bring up the exposure and clarity. To do that, I'm gonna select masking, create a new mask, select on brush. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw right over the wheels. And I can zoom in just to make sure I'm not getting anything else. Now, if you start to highlight anything more of the wheels, let's just say you highlight like the car or the foreground and you don't want to do that, you can either press Command Z to start all over or, or you can hold down the Option key and it'll start erasing. So all you got to do is just while you're holding down the Option key, use your mouse pad or your clicker and start erasing what you mistakenly colored in. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up exposure to about 0.40 and then clarity to about 25. Now, if you look at the before and after, you can see that's a huge difference, but we're not done yet. The background is still a little blown out and we're gonna go ahead and fix that in just a couple steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and locate my whites and I'm gonna drop it down to 35. You know what? I might need to go a little more than that. Let's do 45. Now, last final touches, I'm gonna go ahead and press R, which is a shortcut for crop. I was gonna say, that's not what I wanted to say. Anyways, um. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to four by five. That way it's the right sizing for the Instagram portrait post. I'm gonna go ahead and do that by selecting original, click four by five, and I'm just gonna eyeball getting the car right in the middle. So after moving it back and forth, I came to the conclusion that I'd rather just have it closer to that first line of the lower thirds. That way you can see the long buildings in the background. Now, one more thing before we finish, I'm gonna go ahead and add a linear gradient over the shadow that we have. So it kind of emphasizes the shadow more and gives it a cooler look. You'll see what I'm about to do right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select create mask, select linear gradient, and then drag it over where the shadow is being presented and make sure we subtract from the subject. Then I'm going to decrease exposure to about, let's just say negative 0.85. Here's the before and after, wow. Now let's go ahead and use this exact same copy and paste it onto one of the rear shots that we took on the camera. I'm gonna do that by pressing Command C, press Enter, and then going to the rear end shot of the car, and then pressing Command V to paste it. Now that we pasted it, we see the exact same problems we're running into, which is the car looks a little too dark and the background's a little too blown out. So we gotta go ahead and touch that up. Now, first thing first, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the subject is selected, and now I'm gonna increase shadows to about 15. Now, while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the exposure to one instead of 1.10 and make sure that the shadow is set to 80. 
I want to make sure that the wheels are also being highlighted in this photo. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with the brush, increasing the exposure and clarity. Selecting this icon, create new mask, brush, zooming in onto the wheels and coloring it in. I'm going to go ahead and increase exposure to about 40 and increase clarity to 25. Now, because the highlights look a little more blown out, I'm going to drop our whites to negative 65. Then I'm going to drop a linear gradient that's going to be going from our foreground to the car, which is going to create a leading line. So your eyes just draw straight to the car instead of going straight to the ground or, or straight to the brightest parts of the photo. I want the viewers to draw attention to the car. To do that, selecting this icon, create a new mask, linear gradient, dragging it from the bottom all the way up, subtract, subject, and then decrease in exposure. And then let's go ahead and crop the photo. Selecting this icon, original, four by five. Let's drag it up about right here. Eyeball how straight this shot should really be. Now the reds look a little too red. I'm looking at the tail lights right now and they're just popping, which is cool, but I think it's a little too much. So first thing first, I'm gonna decrease saturation to negative 25. And then I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the red hues to make it look more red than purple. Cause that's what it looked like before. And that is a major difference. And there we go. That is the editing process for not just only those two shots, but the same type of flow for all the other shots you'll see on our Instagram page. If you learned something new and you want to show some support, you can either go ahead, drop a like, leave a comment, don't subscribe. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Or if you really, really, really want to support us, support my Chick-fil-A addiction. You can go ahead and go to velvado.com and check out all the presets we have available. Other than that, it's Daniel from Velvado. Please guys take care, have a great week, and we'll see you guys all in the next video.